Joining us once again is former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura. The paperback of the best-selling book, Democrips and Rebloodlikens, No More Gangs in Government, is now available. Also, October 1st, the new book, They Killed Our President, 63 Facts That Prove a Conspiracy to Kill JFK. Uh, Governor, pleasure as always to talk to you. Um, Thanks, I, David. Always my pleasure. I can't think of a better time to talk to you about conspiracy and conspiracy theories, two issues which you're very much associated with the TV show, of course, and the books, than right now when we have allegations from some that uh, the AP Department of Justice situation, the Benghazi situation, and the IRS situation are all planned and that President Obama personally was involved. So I want to get your take. What do you think about all of the theories surrounding these three issues? Well, David, unfortunately, <laughs> we're in a lot of trouble right now because I just returned from Mexico about uh, 10 or 12 days ago. Yeah. And I did not watch TV from January 2nd until I returned. <laughs> So, so you had a rude I, awakening I, when you I, came David, back. David, i got to tell you, to be honest, I'm an honest guy. I don't dare comment because I don't know nothing. <laughs> so, so certainly in the 12 days you've been back, you have All not right, put together I, I a theory that the says there's a conspiracy. Again, I'm not watching the news. Fascinating. So, what, I, like, I, you... I, 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 you know, I just got so tired of it. I, I saw such shoddy reporting. When there was the last fall, when that big shoot, shooting took place in Connecticut, right, the reporting was so horrible that you, in the end, 24 hours later, you didn't know what to believe and what not to believe hmm. because the mainstream media ran with so many untrue stories. I mean, I remember when they said for eight hours they were telling us the shooter's mom worked at the school. Right. Well, that wasn't true. And so in light of the journalism practice today in America, the mainstream media, I don't know what to believe and what not to believe. And I've chosen for the last four months now to shut it out of my life and get rid of it. And I have to tell you, it's been wonderful. So that's interesting. So do you do you even have a about these three issues that so many people are now there? People are actually emailing me saying we need to know what Jesse Ventura thinks about this, because on, on any kind of conspiracy, he's the authority. You're not even interested in getting involved in those. You don't even know what's going on. I, I, sh I left in January, and I, I can tell you what I did do. Yeah. I experienced one of, the, uh, of an experience that was in my top ten, and believe me, I've done a lot of things. I went to a small lagoon in Mexico <laughs> and was able for over an hour to physically hand and touch gray whales and their children in the wild. Wow. Where the whale approaches you. We were in a 20-foot boat, and the mother whale was like 40 feet long. The baby was probably 15 or more. That's incredible. And, and you're able to, they come up to you totally. You, you don't feel any fear, and it shows me that obviously these whales communicate, because how would a mother know that it's safe to bring her child to these human beings in this particular lagoon? Yeah. And it's because of an elderly Mexican man who established a rapport with the whales that we're able to do this. And they're so close. You can look into their eyes. I put my hands in their mouth. Why, though? Why put your hand in the mouth? They like it. Oh, okay. They have, like, brussel teeth, and they love to be scratched. You get an entire class on it the night before you go out. They tell you. They say the only thing we don't recommend, don't touch the blowhole and don't touch their eyes. Hmm. But anything else, fine. It's interesting and that if, if you, I, I was just reading it, it today, was Governor. -changing. I was just well, reading sorry. today. I mean, I'm getting off on another tangent, but it was life changing to me. No, well, it's interesting you bring up Mexico because I was just reading today in, in the new Better Life Index. Mexico is actually in the top 10 countries that are that are the happiest countries. And the United States is actually not in that list. So I think it's just kind of interesting that you you're spending I, more and more time there. And even I, considering the economic situation, people are generally pretty happy in Mexico. Oh, unbelievable. I concur wholeheartedly. I can't tell you the joy and poverty down there. 
Hmm. See, I don't live in one of these. There's communities in Mexico. I call it the United States of Mexico. Right. Because they're dated, they're protected, and the only Mexicans you see in these communities are the ones that work for you and, you know, water the lawns and change your bed. Linen. Yeah. I don't live there. I live an hour from pavement. I live an hour from electricity. I live in rural Mexico amongst the Mexicans. If you're going to live in Mexico... Why wouldn't you want to live with the Mexicans? Would you be nervous, it's Governor? Their, it's, their, it's their country. Pardon me? In the case of, like, a medical emergency, are you comfortable being that far from pavement even, or are there medical well, services nearby? Well, you know, life, life's an adventure, sir. So you're, you're going to chance it. I got it. And, 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 you know, I'm getting older, but I wanted to go on another adventure before that window of opportunity closes, and so I chose to live winter's in the most obscure part of the Baja you can live, <laughs> and I can't tell you how joyous and wonderful and happy my wife and I are. It, 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 it's been life-changing living down there, and the, I can't tell people how wonderful the Mexican people are. You I know, know it. Have, I've been to Mexico plenty, plenty of times. It sounds like you're enjoying it, but I want to just, oh, in the interest of trying... Speak, I don't even speak the language. I'm just <laughs> a big, dumb gringo down there. Right. <laughs> hey, a couple of questions, just to, 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 to hit a couple points on politics. Sure. Sandy Hook, you mentioned that, the Connecticut shooting, and Boston Marathon bombing. A lot of conspiracies around those two. What's your thought on those, or have you not taken a position? I haven't taken a position, but I will take a position on the Second Amendment. Okay. People need to understand the Second Amendment was put there so that we, the citizens, would have the ability to fight our government hmm. if our government became oppressive. It is not there for hunting and fishing. And for those that say we could never stand up to our government, excuse me, start reading your history books. There was a little country in Southeast Asia that we dropped more ordnance on than we did World War II. I'm speaking, of course, of Vietnam. Right. They had no Navy. They had no Air Force. All they were were a bunch of rice farmers with a few AK-47s. And we threw everything we had at them. And we could not defeat them, could we? Yeah, but, Governor, I think we have to now, consider there. Minute. Governor, I think we do wait have to consider there. Let me there. add to this, that the last six or seven genocides in the last century have all occurred in countries where they ban citizen ownership of guns. So when they assault, I was in the Philippines the day Ferdinand Marcos, physically there, the day Ferdinand Marcos declared martial law and became the dictator, the first thing he did was he gave the Philippine people 10 to 14 days to turn in all their guns or it was the death penalty. Now why, why would a dictator make that his first and foremost objective but i understand that governor but realistically speaking in the u.s do you believe that that americans should have the rights to own all of the same weapons that the government does well of course you can't own a nuclear weapon okay but americans what about just what about shoulder mounted weapons, rpgs a or apache americans helicopters don't own the same weapons the assault weapons sold to the private, you have to have a license to hold full automatic. Right. The assault weapons sold are semi-automatic. They shoot just like a deer rifle, only they use a smaller round, and they don't have a telescopic sight usually. But the point is that you cannot own an automatic weapon unless you are federally licensed to do so. Okay, but so, so Governor, do you believe individuals should, should be able to own shoulder-mounted RPGs, civilians? That's a rocket. That's not a gun. That's not a handgun. Okay. So given that I'm different. hearing then that I'm you I'm saying I'm talking about firearms. Okay, fair enough, governor. I'm so not in that case, I'm talking about army tanks. I'm not talking about So you know, therefore, okay. All right. Well, shouldn't we start doing background checks then on people that buy manure because you can make bombs out of them? But my it? the question I'm really getting to, governor, is in the context right. of this kind of fighting back against the government. If you are limiting individual civilians simply to what you have now described as firearms, it doesn't really stand to reason that those would be effective against Apache helicopters, tanks, so on and so forth, does it? Well, it did in Vietnam. But it's a very different situation there, Governor. And the other difference there no, also it is that... It's people, no, it isn't. It's people fighting to be free. It's people fighting to be self-governed, to govern themselves. That's what the Vietnam people were fighting over. 
Yeah, but they Governor, you also have to consider. Country. What's you, that? I think you have to consider also when it comes to Vietnam that the 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 strategy from the from the Vietnamese was simply to get as many American casualties as possible, knowing that the U.S. had a limit to the number of people they were willing to lose. So th it would be a very different situation to, to, to say that those weapons are going to keep the American government from becoming tyrannical against its own people. I just don't see the connection. Really? Well, then why is it that these genocides happen in countries where the government genocides their people and kills them in masses they always happen in countries where guns are outlawed. But, Governor, you're Pretty cherry, you're that, cherry picking it? that now, bit of data. Okay, this is good discussion. Let's go back to World War II. No, but the hold on, Governor. Before we do that, before we do that, you're cherry picking only a fact about guns when there are so many other factors in countries that lead to oppression by the government or don't lead to oppression by yeah, the government well, that have nothing to throw, do with okay, guns. Let's throw in the whole destruction of our Bill of Rights. Well, that's when a different the, discussion. When the Wall that's a different Street discussion. People were protesting. What happened? The government came in with pepper spray and dogs and ran them off. There went the First Amendment that guaranteed you the right to protest. No, well, Let's now, go Governor, the, now, now Let's you're go getting to the Fourth yeah. Amendment, uh, a, a reasonable search and seizure. They're now flying drones over us. They've got us under surveillance. I to Governor, there I totally am going to be more in agreement with you. We're kind the of switching is, issues, though. I feel the like these are different issues. destruction of our Bill of Rights here? <laughs> I, I think that each one of these Amendment. is a different Let's issue. disarm the public because we're going to keep you safe and we're going to take care of you. You don't need to have these guns. They're too dangerous for you to have. I totally, I, I, I think that we're looking at a couple different issues, but because we have limited time, I, I absolutely have to get in just a couple of audience questions that we had. Um, Carly wrote in to me and he said he wants to know, why does Jesse Ventura lend Alex Jones legitimacy by appearing on his show and so on and so forth. Yet we've seen so many revelations of truth contrary to the things Alex Jones says. For example, his broadcast right before the new millennium, December 31st, 1999, was talking about world chaos and all sorts of stuff that just flat out didn't happen and that there's many other predictions. And the question from Carly is, you're a respected elected official. Why are you lending your name to someone like Alex Jones, who's been wrong so many times? Well, because Alex Jones has also been right on a lot of things, too. And you need to remember, I did a show called Conspiracy Theory on TV. I remember it. it it's called Entertainment. Yeah. You know, and uh, and <laughs> so you think Alex you Jones is entertaining, but you, you know, don't necessarily think that it's good journalism. To understand too that, that our media, our news media today is nothing but entertainment. Mm. It's all about entertainment. It's all corporate run. It's all based upon the dollar, and it's based upon uh, listenership. But how does that anyone, tie into you giving legitimacy to Alex Jones? Anyone sadly mistaken, because it's all, that's what the whole, runs the whole world, is the almighty dollar. But so and, how does this tie into Alex Jones, Governor? Well, Alex, I don't know. You tell me. Why am I discredited? Because I do his show. I've also done other shows. I've done Hannity's show. I've done CNN, too. Those are entertainment shows. Right. Pol so you consider, so, Governor, so you're the saying... the point is, I can't pick and choose... No, I get when that. I do a, when I do a book tour like this... Totally. I don't pick and choose who I'm going on with. So I what you're saying... I whoever will have me on. I don't want to misquote you, but you're saying that you see Alex Jones as another entertainment show. All shows are entertainment. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Yes, and then uh, because all shows are out to get listeners. Come on. And then other question I got from Corey. He says uh, he wants to know if you're going to do another season of the conspiracy show. No, we're not. Uh, uh, True TV did not renew us for another season. We did three seasons of eight shows. Twenty four, twenty three out of the twenty four aired the one on the TSA. They wouldn't put on the air. Huh. Interesting. All right. Well, we I want to remind people the books. We have the paperback of Democrips and Rebloodlickens, No More Gangs in Government. Also, you have the new book coming out October 1st. They killed our president. 63 facts that prove a conspiracy to kill JFK. I predict the book will do very well. Governor, pleasure as always having you on. Thank you, David. And again, to your listeners who are concerned about Alex Jones and all that. Hey, 
Alex may be right about many things. He may be wrong about things, but he at least makes you think a little bit and opens up your eyes. And what, someone out there is going to tell me the government's never lied to me? All the government does is lie to me. Certainly, the, the Alex Jones has been wrong and the government has been wrong. I think that's a good kind of final point to put on the there discussion. There you go. Here. All right, thanks. We'll talk again, David. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.